my name is Kevin McNally and my research is based on a few assumptions, each of, each of which zooms closer into my practice. One is that new ways of thinking are needed to mitigate the effects of global warming, ways of thinking that are far more emplaced and embodied than those that are currently dominant. Secondly, that knowing place through sound provides us with an improved mode of understanding our relationship to the non-human world around us. And finally, the tuning in that happens via musical interaction is in fact a model for the kind of ecological awareness that's key to this new way of thinking. I'm applying these questions to my practice as a community music facilitator and I'm asking if applying ideas from eco-critical philosophy can help us create art that generates an experience of place in this integrated and entangled way. Um, I want to talk about one of my most influential authors who's a, an Irish poet and philosopher called John Moriarty. And Mar Moriarty tells this story that I think comes from a uh, Sufi tradition, but he tells it like this, that one night there's a, a policeman walking his beat along a street, a residential street, and it's very dark. But as he comes to a street lamp, he can see that there is uh, a man on his hands and knees going looking for something on the floor in the light the circle of light that's been cast by the by the street lamp and so the policeman comes up to him and he asks him what's going on can i help and the man says i'm looking for my keys um i was just out for you know for a few drinks and when i got home i realized i didn't have my keys i must have dropped them somewhere between um you know home and here and uh, will you help me look for them and so the policeman helps him look and they're, they're looking around in this circle of, of light. Uh, like I said, that's cast by the street lamp and they go around it a few times and, and they still don't find the keys. And eventually the policeman says, he asks the man, are you sure that you lost them here? And the man says, oh, no, I didn't lose them here at all. I, I lost them somewhere over there in the, in the dark. And the policeman said, well, why are you? Why, why are you looking for them here? And the man says, well, this is where the light is. And what Moriarty says about the, the story is that there are aspects of our lives that are measurable, that are knowable, that are scientifically sort of verifiable and relatively reliable, and that we spend most of our time looking in this area because that's where the light is. That's where the definite knowledge is. But if we only dwell there, we will miss out. That knowledge is really valuable and really important, but we can balance that knowledge, and that experience in by exploring darkness and exploring those aspects of, of, of our lives and of reality that are less measurable and less knowable. Um, the experience that happens outside of the easily measurable and art itself is dark confusing fluid and entangled and learning to stay with that uncertainty and to be comfortable in the darkness is ultimately a good thing for us um, and it's ultimately a good thing for our relationship with the planet another important author for me is the uh, eco philosopher timothy morton who criticizes environmentalism and he embraces a an ecological thought full of strangeness and uncanny encounters. In his formulation, the experience of beauty is actually a microdose of death, in the sense that with that experience of beauty, the self becomes detached from a secure position of identity and instead engages in a sort of a symbiosis with the art object. No one is sure if the beauty experience resides in the object or in the subject perceiving it. That's a really valuable um, kind of point to make. What all that means in the rehearsal studio, though, is that 
the act of creating sonically together. In that act, the humans merge with their instruments and become a sort of a symbiosis. And all those symbiotic beings merge again in the larger ensemble as a group where information is passed, not through words or symbols, but through subtle shifts of intensity of sound and feeling. And not always in a positive way. So being together then in the rehearsal studio is less about recognizing the identity of an individual other. And it's more about tuning, tuning into variations of intensities, variations of feelings and differences uh, in this shared sonic space. And it's that sort of tuning in, meeting halfway the object where you sort of the, the subject object duality becomes a bit merged. Um, that is actually a, a great way of understanding our general, general relationship with the non-human world. Certainly it's better than the, the utilitarian one that exists at present. Well, this was my path until March. And now in a post-COVID reality, um, I'm left with just me and the instruments of the ensemble. My latest challenge now is to make music that's meaningful to the research question without sharing the physical space with other humans. <laughs>